I decided to get on Hinge dating app. Uh, that's when I actually met this guy named Hal, which is where it all started. <laughs> These people will take as much from you, you know, till you're in debt. And really what they're doing is just scamming you. My money, my dad and I's money was gone in seconds. Eighteen to twenty-nine year olds are increasingly being targeted by romance scammers. Last year, $139 million were stolen through these scams in cryptocurrency alone. For Brute, I'm taking you to Tennessee to meet up with 24-year-old Nikki Hutchinson, who lost nearly $400,000 to a crypto scammer she met on Hinge. Now she's living in an RV with her dad. So this is kind of our home abode where my dad and I live. This is kind of where I do all my work when I'm a social media producer or just straight chilling. This is my little office. This is our little kitchen. My dad's room, the master, my closet. We don't need to go in there. It's a little messy. So yeah, that's our little home <laughs> on wheels. In October of 2021, I visited a friend out in Southern California. I decided to get on Hinge dating app. 24 years old, never been on a date, never kissed guy. Dating was never really in my priorities. But as you get older, obviously all your friends have been on dates or have boyfriends or girlfriends. And it's like, oh, I kind of want to know like what that would be like. I started, you know, swiping right to these people. And uh, that's when I actually met this guy named Hal. I thought he had like a clean appearance not super bulky, not athletic, not like a frat boy of any sort, soft eyes, feminine looking almost. I've always gravitated towards those types of people because they feel easier to connect with. And he was also Asian. That's a big thing for me. <laughs> okay, well I will use half of it in here and then I'll save the other half for if I want to make like pho. I think there was only like three kids in my high school that was Asian. And so it was just like that, it just didn't feel right. I always felt like a little bit of an outcast because I was never white, but I wasn't Asian enough. I'm still trying to figure out where I fit in really. I do think anybody who's been adopted or anyone feeling outcasted in a sense, like not looking the same like everyone else, you, you do want to have that sense of um, community and bond. The first message I think on Hinge was like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. I just kind of pushed that aside because that makes me very uncomfortable, to be honest. Even from the get-go, I was like, there seemed to be a language barrier. He, he texted really good English, but it felt very formal, like what you are supposed to be taught when you're actually learning English. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I don't think a connection could ever be super deep just because of a language barrier. So I was like, okay, well, that's fine. Like I voiced that maybe we should just be friends and he was super okay with that. So that was kind of like my first experience of like a guy friend and a guy friend that wasn't super pushy and kind of respected my boundaries of like, hey, let's just be friends and whatnot. I 
and trying to get to know anyone, you're in a sense have to be a bit vulnerable in order for them to kind of get to know you and who you are. So that's kind of what we did. I started asking him questions about his family and like I told him I was adopted. I asked about hobbies and he rattled off a ton of hobbies and then at the end it said cryptocurrency. When I was a lot younger, my mom worked and she made really good money, you know, middle class, upper middle class. And then when she lost her job, we struggled. I remember being on food stamps. They divorced, there was a lot of stuff going on and I just felt very unstable. After losing that, I think she lost a bit of her, and so she took that out through drinking. I grew up with that from, you know, middle school all the way up into college, and it was just really sad to see my mother just, the mother that I loved kind of disappear. This is my childhood home. Um, when my mother passed away, it kind of came to me and my dad and I split the profits. The way he texted about teaching me and showing me was like, FaceTime, you know, showing me what to do, giving me tips. I go back to him and he's like, are you ready to learn? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely ready to learn. How are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do Zoom? Are we gonna do FaceTime? And he was very confused. He was like, FaceTime, Zoom? I can just teach you over WhatsApp. And I was like, okay, that wasn't what I expected. So I was like, well, why don't we just do a quick FaceTime? <laughs> You're good? You are shy. <laughs> are you like me? <laughs> well, I'm really excited to learn crypto. Oh, you turned me off. <laughs> My friend recorded like the whole him being on FaceTime, but she didn't like get any of his, I guess like face or anything. I just remember freaking out inside because what I saw was just an eyeball. And I was just like, why is there a freaking eyeball looking at me and doing this? Like it was looking all around and it was just like. Oh my gosh, this guy is really shy, like super nervous. I want to always take care of my family. I take care of my 90 or four year old grandmother. I got you some flowers. You want me to hold them? Yeah. Okay. I was paying for her finances as well as my dad helping to chip in. But also my dad, I, I know he's 66 years old. He has a fixed income. So I wanted to make sure he could live the dream life I thought I could provide for him. All right, I love you. All right, all right. I'll see you next week, okay? okay. I love you. Love you too. All right, have a good day. Bye. I shared that like I have these fears and how always made me feel like it's okay, you know, you know, you're gonna figure it out, but also like with investing, you, you're gonna, you know, have all this money to not even worry about those mundane types of things. And you can live the life and your dream life that you want because you'll have the money to take care of your grandmother and your dad. I think he started to know that that's the reason why I would do this. We would do the buying and selling for maybe five minutes at the most. And it just felt like, okay, tell me when to buy and sell. It was exciting.
adrenaline? It felt, it did feel like an adrenaline. It felt like, wow, this is how people do it in like crypto. They buy and sell at a certain time. And like, this is, this is the feeling. But I also felt like, I felt very confused. He kept wanting me to get these bonuses and VIPs. And so he wanted me to get to like, I think 50K at that point. You're seeing profits go up. The fact that I am making profits and I'm seeing results from it, that's where I started to trust how a bit more. It first started out 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, got to 15,000 and then 20,000, 25, 50,000, and then I think 75 was the highest I ever put in on a wire transfer. He said, you could be a millionaire at the end of the year. There was still so many unclear answers. It was really hard to digest. And I just remember crying. I was in hysteric and I just said, I think, I think I lost all this money. I think we've been in a scam.